Welcome to the Network Inclusion Criteria Provider Orientation. In today's session, we will discuss an overview of the NIAC recredentialing process, discuss the remote NIAC review accommodations, discuss the purpose and function of the NIC scoring tool and its use in the overall review process, and provide an overview of the NIC 3.0, including updated standards, revised practices, and amended network recognition levels. NIAC's mission statement. The Network Improvement and Accountability Collaborative promotes ongoing transformation of behavioral health providers to improve the quality of care for people receiving services. NIAC establishes an accountability partnership among people receiving services, DBHIDS, providers, and other stakeholders through a unique collaborative process. What is now called NIAC represents an evolution in the creation of a single consistent method of quality oversight for our network. The NIAC unit is a key contributor to the overall monitoring process for the Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services. The transformation of DBHIDS, which began in 2006, led to the integrated monitoring team, continued to be refined through the performance improvement process or PIP team, and today we are called the Network Improvement and Accountability Collaborative, where our focus is on improving quality care, measuring outcomes to foster excellence in service delivery, and ensuring alignment with population health approaches. Our work is grounded in traditional credentialing activities and best practices related to the recovery transformation principles of DBHIDS. NIAC composition. The NIAC unit's structure and reporting relationships and internal structure are diagrammed here. NIAC is housed within the DBH IDS Quality Management Department with executive sponsorship from the Deputy Commissioner of Administration and Finance. NIAC staff come from City, CBH, and PMHCC. Collectively, we represent DBH IDS and our work is reflective of our blended composition. The program director, program manager, operations specialist, clinical project manager, and four supervisors form our internal leadership. Each team is headed by one of the NIAC supervisors and includes four behavioral health clinical consultants and one certified peer specialist for a total of 20 behavioral health consultants and four certified peer specialists. The goals of a NIAC site review include the following. To establish and support partnerships between providers and DBHIDS. To aid agencies in improving their service delivery and quality outcomes for all individuals, families, and children served. We ensure that the service delivery and procedures are recovery and resilience focused and that they are consistent with the mission, values, and initiatives of DBHIDS. The NIAC review provides a single coherent mechanism to assess an agency's quality of care via the service delivery process. Our recommendations support and aid continuous quality improvement. And finally, through the oversight and monitoring of providers within the DBHIDS network, we seek to increase efficiency and interagency reliability in the implementation of behavioral health standards of practice. We will now move on to the planning and process of a NIAC monitoring review. Agencies are selected for a site review based on their previous network recognition level status. Agencies are then contacted by NIAC's operations specialist who calls to inform your agency representative of the review dates. Next, the operations specialist will send the agency a confirmation email outlining the dates and details of the agency's review. 
you will also receive a confirmation letter detailing the necessary preparations. Each agency submits all required documents to the NIAC operations specialist prior to the review, and then the on-site recredentialing review occurs. After the site review concludes, the NIAC team meets internally for the debriefing process. Over the course of several days, team members thoroughly discuss the agency's documentation and objective scores in order to develop consensus statements for every domain, standard, and practice of the network inclusion criteria. The findings are then detailed in a recredentialing report, which gets submitted to the agency for review. Within 30 days of receiving the written report, the provider will submit a performance improvement plan response and agency feedback form to NIAC. Finally, a recommended network status for each level of care is presented to the CBH Credentialing Committee. Providers that receive funding from the Office of Behavioral Health or the Office of Addiction Services undergo a separate but similar presentation process. Remote NIAC reviews. NIAC reviews are typically conducted on site at the provider facility. Remote desk reviews are conducted when circumstances require. Remote NIAC reviews are designed to mirror the on site review process as closely as possible using a combination of technologies such as conference calls, Zoom web conferences, Microsoft Teams meetings, electronic document submission through box.com, or with remote EMR access. Please note that providers who are unable to offer remote EMR access for NIAC staff will be asked to submit PDF files of all requested clinical information. Secure document submissions. Clinical chart documentation, staff files, and any documents that are too large for emailing can be submitted securely through dbhids.box.com. The NIAC operations specialist will forward detailed instructions via email, along with a link that is unique to your organization. This link will be active throughout the duration of the review. When uploading new documents, always be sure to notify your assigned team facilitator and the operations specialist in order to confirm receipt. Also, please ensure that each file is appropriately named and labeled prior to uploading. Any pre-review documents requested can be safely submitted to NIAC using either email or through this process at dbhids.box.com. Email submissions of pre-review documents will continue to be accepted. NIAC preparations. Prior to each site review, the NIAC team goes through a detailed process to prepare. The NIAC team reviews the self-appraisal that your agency submits, which gives us a greater understanding of how you're addressing each domain of the network inclusion criteria. A NIAC behavioral health clinical consultant serves as a site review team facilitator. All aspects of the review are guided by the network inclusion criteria. The team facilitator will review and score your agency's written policies according to the network inclusion criteria standards for excellence. The NIAC team meets with other departments within DBHIDS to share and obtain information that may be relevant to the site review. For example, CBH provider relations may inform us of an evidence-based practice that your agency is implementing, or CBH quality management may inform us of a recent quality concern at your agency. The NIAC team facilitator reviews your agency's contract, also known as the Schedule A, and your agency's pro program service descriptions in order to understand the scope of services you provide. The NIAC team facilitator also reviews your agency's licensing reports from the Office of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services and the Department of Health. Finally, the team facilitator and certified peer specialist work closely with your agency's contact to develop the site review schedule, which will include all of the activities that are needed to collect our data.
Like the NIAC team, we recognize that you and your agency put a great deal of time and effort into preparing for the NIAC review. Beyond what your agency chooses to do internally, NIAC also requests that the providers submit certain documentation prior to the review. The required documentation is listed on attachment A, which is sent to you by the NIAC operations specialist. Some of the required documentation includes the agency self-appraisal and high-risk behavior data, including suicide and homicidal attempts, medical health incidents requiring urgent care, elopements, and naloxone, naloxone administration. A copy of your agency's policies and procedures for all programs being reviewed in 16 specific areas that are required by the network inclusion criteria. A copy of assessment forms being used by each program, which aids the NIAC team's review of your agency's clinical records, as well as a full staff roster for each program that's being reviewed using a template that is provided to you. Now, let's talk about the site review itself. This will consist of up to 10 different types of activities, which when combined, oh, yeah. offer a 360 degree recredentialing review. The site review begins with the entrance conference. The NIAC team, along with your agency leads, such as the clinical director or risk manager, will meet to communicate about the site review process, including the schedule of activities. During the entrance conference, your agency is encouraged to give a brief overview of any changes to your services since the last NIAC review. During the executive level interview, the team facilitator and certified peer specialist will meet with your chosen executive staff to discuss your services. A copy of the questions to expect in this interview are provided for your review in attachment A. Your executive staff are welcome to review these questions. Our certified peer specialists collect data from the a tour of your facility, which is led by an individual receiving services and or planned observation within the facility. Their role is to assess multiple dimensions of your facility. For example, how the physical plan accommodation accommodates individuals, how welcoming your space is and the accessibility of Narcan. Due to current restrictions, we may ask that some of these observations be conducted through digital platforms, such as submitted pictures of your facility or a tour via teleconference. During the living review, a NIAC team member will interview three people, one of the individuals receiving services, a clinician working with that individual, and the clinician's supervisor. The purpose of the living review is to collect data on the quality of services provided and the formal and informal relationships that occur that exist between the individual and the agency. The NIAC team will review a sample of your agency's clinical records for individuals that are CVH members. These will be a mix of open and closed records. NIAC certified peer specialists conduct discussion groups which individuals receive services to collect data about your agency's services. Similarly, they will also facilitate family inclusion discussion groups to collect data from family members, caregivers, and or supporters of the individuals receiving services. NIAC team members also hold discussion groups with frontline staff members. To encourage staff members to share openly, supervisors are not able to be present in these discussion groups. Discussion groups are conducted for all levels of care at your agency and will ideally consist of six to eight persons. One-on-one -on -one interviews can be conducted if discussion groups are not possible at your agency. Finally, a NIAC member, team member, will review a sample of staff files to assess training materials and to determine if staff are receiving the training required by the network inclusion criteria. We also review clinical supervision notes, logs, and performance evaluations from your agency. After all other activities are complete, 
the NIAC team and your chosen agency staff will convene at the exit conference. Here, the NIAC team will provide your agency with a brief and general overview of our preliminary finds. The next slide details requirements around the peer focus groups and offers some helpful pointers to make this aspect of the review successful. The Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disabilities values the lived experience of all whom we served. And we understand that the role of peer culture is integral to the success of our members, the provider agency, and the community at large. The value add of peer support and peer culture are two of the reasons that each NIAC team has a certified peer specialist engaged in the recredentialing review process. This next slide details requirements around the peer focus groups and offers some helpful pointers to make this aspect of the review successful. Debriefing. Detailed findings cannot be provided to your agency at the exit conference because the NIAC team has not had a chance to process the data we have collected at your agency. It is during the post-site visit debriefing that our team reconvenes to share data and take a more in-depth look at our findings. Consider and interpret data gathered and summarize findings. Team members are also, team members also re review scoring for each NIC practice for every level of care. The data, interpretation, and scoring will later be detailed in the official report, which is completed by the team facilitator. Purpose of the network inclusion criteria. The purpose of DBH IDS's practice guidelines and the network inclusion criteria, otherwise known as the NIC, consists of the following. It measures agency alignment with the DBH IDS practice guidelines. It serves to gain a deeper understanding of clinical and business practices that occur at your agency. And it allows us to have one instrument in place to be used at all levels of care within the DBH IDS network, regardless of funding stream. The NIC should essentially serve as your go-to resource to ensure that all services and programmatic structures align with the practices that are noted throughout. DBH IDS practice guidelines. As noted within the previous slide, one of the NIC's primary purposes is to ensure agency alignment with the DBH IDS practice guidelines. The practice guideline serves as the foundation of the NIC. The NIC was derived from this framework that you see here, which serves to make up the DBH IDS practice guidelines. The framework consists of the four overarching domains, which includes assertive outreach and initial engagement, screening, assessment, service planning and delivery, continuing support and early re-intervention, and community connection and mobilization. There are also seven goals and 10 core values, which are woven throughout the four domains. The presence of this framework can also be seen throughout the practices that make up the NIC. NIC structure. The structure of the NIC is very similar to the structure of the DBH IDS practice guidelines, but with an added foundations area in addition to the four domains. The added foundations of excellence and service delivery section is more of an organizational focus area. It covers agency staffing and development, where we look at staff demographics, reflection of those served and staff trainings. Clinical and general supervision practices, this is where we look at supervision documentation and performance evals. Quality of care and outcome measures. This is where we look at the data you are collecting as well as associated policies. Other sections in the NIC includes standard. This describes a major subsection of program performance. 
objective. This defines each standard providing a description and rationale. Practice, these consist of strategies to achieve the objective that further describe program or staff performance. Practices are derived from the DBH IDS practice guidelines and it is the practices that are assessed and scored by the NIAC teams. Information sources. These are the activities that will be completed at your agency by the NIAC team to gain information to score and assess each practice. Please note that both the NIC and the practice guidelines can be found on the DBH IDS website at www dbhids.org. NIC scoring. For most practices, scoring is done in the background through a software program the team utilizes called vertical change. During a site review, the team assesses which elements of a giving practice are present or not present based on this information, a score is derived. Each NIC practice is scored on a three-point scale, ranging from zero to two. The score of a zero indicates that the practice is not present, not occurring, or in the case of documentation is duplicated. The score of a one indicate that the practice is partially present or occurring intermittently. A score of a two indicates that the practice is fully present and or thoroughly executed. Tabulating level of care score. Points earned for each practice are summed to create a standard score. As previously stated, this is all done behind the scenes via vertical change. Please also note that the single county authority addendum is not included in the level of care score tabulations. Once a standard score is created, they are then summed to create a score for each domain to include the section on the Foundations of Excellence and Service Delivery. Each of the four practice domain scores in the Foundations of Excellence and Service Delivery score is then weighted. The five weighted scores are summed to create a level of care score. The level of care score determines your DBH IDS network recognition level for that level of care within your agency. The updated network recognition levels will be reviewed later in this presentation. Weightings for domains and foundations of excellence in service delivery. The table you see here serves to give insight into how the foundation section in each subsequent domain is weighted. During the NICS initial development, Key stakeholders, including the provider community, offered feedback regarding value and weighting of these scored areas. The result of those feedback sessions is what you see here. Foundations covers the infrastructure and framework of the agency focusing on policies and staffing practices related to strength-based recovery-oriented supervision, training, education, and performance evaluations. Note that most heavily weighted area, domain two, focuses on safety and treatment. This covers screenings, assessments, and evaluations for significant life events in areas such as for suicidality, homicidality, trauma, and bullying. Strength-based resiliency and recovery plans and progress documentation are all assessed within this domain. The area of continuing support planning addresses those areas typically considered aftercare and discharge. Domains one and four tend to the provider's relationship with members in the community. Here we ask you to share how you outreach and support your members, natural supports, and families of choice. The tabulation of foundations along with each domain yields a total level of care score that can range from 50 to 100%. To reiterate, these sections are scored per level of care, not per program or agency. For example, your outpatient psychiatric level of care may have a different level of care score than your case management level of care.
DBH IDS PACE Strategic Framework. In 2018, DBH IDS adopted a five-year strategic plan called PACE, prioritizing to address our changing environment, which was designed to improve quality of care outcomes for Philadelphians. PACE is a set of priorities for delivering services and programs in a manner that aligns with our values and with the population health approach. The goal of PACE is to align the efforts of DBH IDS divisions and provider agencies in supporting the wellness of all Philadelphians. PACE is comprised of the five priority areas listed here. Details about PACE can be found on the DBH IDS website and in Appendix G of the NIC 3.0 Standards for Excellence. NIC 3.5 Mandatory Outcome Measures. And our aim to support PACE alignment NIAC requires that the outcome measures collected by providers are within the scope of the five priority areas delineated within PACE. NIAC scores providers on their implementation of these outcome measures and how data that is collected is utilized to inform and improve service delivery at your agency. This slide provides examples of outcome measures that align with each of the five priority areas of PACE. Trauma, Equity, and Community. The Adverse Childhood Experience, or ACEs study, is one of the largest investigations conducted that identified the relationship between childhood trauma and chronic disease developed later in life. In 2012, the ACEs study expanded to include five additional community-level adversities to better understand how these adversities specifically affected the urban population. The results were profound. 67% of the 1,800 adults surveyed experienced at least one of the categorized adverse events prior to age 17, and 40% or two out of five adults surveyed reported experiencing four or more of the expanded community level adversities. Traumatic experiences continuously show the devastating impact on our communities. In recognition of the intersection of trauma, equity, and community, DBH IDS, under the leadership of our current commissioner, forwarded the Tech Initiative. DBH IDS acknowledges the long-term impact of trauma and through our various capabilities, seeks to help ameliorate the impact of trauma while simultaneously supporting strength and resiliency within the person and the community. Some of our updates that will be discussed are a result of this recognition. Key changes in the NIC 3.0 and 3.5. The updated network inclusion criteria structure remains the same with 14 standards in the added single county authority addendum. One practice has been removed for a new total of 58 practices. For the next uh, five slides, the following five slides provide detailed changes that have occurred in the network inclusion criteria 3.5. CBH previously required submission of medication policies related to the clinical practice guidelines. At this time, the only medication policies NIAC will continue to score is the use of psychotropic medication in children and adolescents to, to include both FDA approved and off-label medications. And adolescent, I'm sorry, in the on-site maintenance administration and prescription of naloxone policy. And as you, and as you see, there is a new practice added within domain two, standard D, and practice five.
Further changes include new practices within domain four, which is practice 4C4 and 4C5. Within domain two, there are some revised practices. The black colored font throughout the slides indicates the updated language from the existing NIC 2.0 and 3.0 documents. And this here on this slide includes practice 2A3 and 2A4. Other revised practices includes 2B1, which is in relation to high-risk behavioral assessments, and practice 2B2. Also included within domain two is revised practices for practice 2B3 and 2C5. Key changes, other key changes. Another key change in the NIC is the inclusion of the single county authority addendum section. This applies to those providers who receive funding from Pennsylvania's Department of Drug and Alcohol Programs, otherwise known as DDAP. This is for the provision of substance use services. This section simply ensures increased alignment, increased practice alignment with the DDAP requirements. There are eight practice areas that are assessed and noted as either present or not present. As stated previously in this presentation, this section is not included in the overall scoring tabulations. They are, however, noted on the standard DDAP SCA monitoring tool. Network recognition levels. In 2019, NIAC implemented their updated network recognition levels. A provider can achieve anywhere from a six month, which is a provisional status, to a three year, which is excellent approval status, based on their recredentialing total level of care score. Site review feedback. Following the NIAC review, please complete the agency feedback form that is included with the confirmation packet. NIAC is interested in knowing more about your experience with the entrance conference, with the executive level interview, the various activities, the exit conference, any feedback regarding specific NIC practices, and feedback regarding the overall review process and experience. Thank you for your participation in NIAC's NIC Provider Orientation.